guys, Stephanie SBM, Artistic Designs. So I just kind of wanted to show you something I had done today. Um, I know a bunch of people now are using this little piggy and putting them into molds. And I did mention to somebody, I, I had a bunch of these. Um, this is redesign, redesigned by Prima and IOD molds that I've had for my furniture rehab or refurbishing days. We used to, you know, we'd make these molds and, and borders and put them all along the legs of furniture and stuff like that. But I took some TLPs today and just kind of dusted them inside. Um, I could actually tell you what the colors are. I'd have to look at the bottles, but I just thought I would show you what I wanted to do with this. So I kind of unmolded it a little bit before. And this is what it looks like. So I really only did some a dusting of some of the colors, but you can see I have ore in there, fairy floss, hustle. I'm trying to think what else I have in there. Um, Aspen, lily pad, um, a couple of other different things to make the greens. I just thought it would be kind of cool just to do a dusting, get a little bit of transparency. So what I would like to do is I thought about fitting it now that it's it's still pliable when you first take it out. Um, I'm going to fit it on an ornament and then let it sit and dry the rest of the way. And then this way, it's now already formed onto the ornament and I don't have to worry about trying to force it. Um, it will dry the rest of the way on the ornament and I thought that would look really pretty. Um, gonna do the rest of the, I'll do something else. Um, I'll do something else on the sides, but this is kind of like the start of doing a little bit different um, technique now with the uh, flowers that you get out of the molds using the TLP pigment. So just thought that would be kind of cool. So thanks, I'll catch up with you later. We'll see what else we could do with these. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, Stephanie, SVM, Artistic Designs. So I wanted to show you, I've been playing around with some TLP pigments and resin. Um, and look at how pretty, one of my cat hairs, that's not nice. But how pretty this flower came out on this ball, this ornament. And it's so multidimensional in color and has some translucent areas to it. I thought it just came out so cute. And I'm gonna show you how I did this. So we'll get started. So basically, let me sit down, so my back is killing me. What I did was, um, I got this mold. This is a mold from Redesign with Prima. Um, I've had it for a long time and it's actually really pretty. I just wanna make sure that you can see the mold itself. I used to refurbish furniture and I used to use these molds a lot for, um, you know, putting on drawers. Um, I have a lot of the ones that, you know, come long ways and it would go down the, the legs of some pieces of older furniture. And it just really looks beautiful. It just adds so much class and femininity to, can't say that word now, femininity <laughs> to a piece of furniture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then when you put some dark waxes around the edges, it just adds so much to it. Now, I did do another flower, but unfortunately, I waited too long to demold it, but it'll be cute for something else. Um, so it was really hard. I couldn't move it. And I'm going to show you what we do with that. So the bottom line is, when you, I have a, a quick set resin from KS Resin. I think it's called Lickety Split Epoxy from KS Resin. Um, I'll put a description in the bo uh, box. Um, oh, I'll put a link in the description box. And I think, I don't know if I have a 10% or 5% coupon. I'll see if there's a coupon for it. I'll put it in there for you. But this is the one that's lickety split. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, um, zero VOCs, low, uh, low odor. Oh my God, I can't speak today. Um, it's only got a 15 minute working time, but you know, you just have to know and plan out what you're doing. Um, and this actually can be dry to the touch in three to four hours and it'll be fully cured in 24 hours. So normally, <clears throat> normally what I do is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> my allergies are killing me today. Normally what I do is I come back in about, 
don't know, maybe two hours and I check to see as long as I can touch it um, and it's not tacky, I can take it out of the mold and then I can actually mold it around a piece of furniture, a furniture leg, or like I did with this ornament, I just molded it around the ornament and then let it cure the rest of the way like that. Um, so I'll show you that part. We'll get to that. So in the meantime, this is what I did. Ver instead of putting all these different colors, since I'm doing a small flower, instead of putting all the colors into small little cups with the resin, I kind of like to dry brush. And I think with the dry brushing, what the results you get is that translucent look. Um, you can see with this one, how you can see a little bit through. Now I did put paint inside of this ball, turned it upside down, just let the paint, you know, drip out and let it dry. Um, this one's like an ivory color, it would look really pretty if it was white or very light pink. Um, but this is what I had. Don't worry about those little pieces of paint that's going to come off. Um, and I'll touch some of this up later on, but you can see the translucency in there and you get that look when you don't put the color inside of the resin mix the resin in the cup and then pour so i'm going to dry brush that so basically i took different colored tlp pigments um so this is a bunch of greens so i've got oh uh, let's see i'll start with asparagus and again i know i said this a million times i just like to tap and open this up away from you you probably should wear a mask um pigments can definitely not be the best thing for your lungs. You don't want to breathe it in. And then I'll take, this is asparagus, and I'll take what's inside of the cap and I'll put that on my little brush. And then I'll just start brushing around and filling in some of the areas on my mold. Now I hope you can see everything, okay? I know I'm a little far away. I'm gonna to have to see if I can get a camera to come closer. And just want to get like on the mold itself in the corners so i kind of just do <clears throat> the edges with a darker color or you could do the opposite way it's the whatever's comfortable for you and then um or you can look at a picture of a leaf and you know see how it looks and then i like to bring some of the lighter colors down Make sure I've got all of these and that's the rose. So I'm going to do another piece that I can put on the back side of this. So you don't really need very much, just, just a little bit on your brush from the inside of the cap. And then dry brush it on. <clears throat> and you want to make sure that you got a little bit of coverage. You don't want to be too light. <clears throat> Once you pour your resin on, it might lift up a little bit of the, the color, but not too much. Mm, that's part of the rose. Here's another piece of leaf. Um, let's see, do I want to do another piece of leaf? Maybe I'll do these little, I can actually bring a stem around. I mean, if you get it on the outside of the mold, it's not a big deal. A little bit of alcohol on a paper towel. I got, got some over here. Um, we'll get that off. Even soap and water, a little bit of Dove, not Dove, Dawn, Dove. My grandmother used Dove. <laughs> Our house always smelled of Dove. Maybe my grandmother's with me. She wanted me to think about her, so she put Dove 
in my head. That should be pretty good. Okay, so maybe Dorothy wants to come in. Alright, so that's good for asparagus. Then I will do lily pad. pad looks. Yeah, I'm just going to take from the inside. Dry brush. Just adding dimension of color. I mean, you could do it one color. You know, it's really entirely up to you. Whatever you like. I, I like having a little bit of um, the way the colors kind of run into each other and they're a little bit different. And you can do a little blending, you know, between the where the colors meet. If you want one stem to be a little darker than another. when you use the cap you're not gonna get to get too much when you dip it in like this it feels like it's just it's just so, a lot on there and then I kind of feel like I might have too much on then you have a lot of powder and, and then when you pour your resin the powder kind of lifts and you'd be surprised how much is in your cap do a little bit of parakeet. This is parakeet. And it's got that lighter green look to it. Want to make sure you kind of get a little up along the sides too. Okay. And then I'll put in a little, oops, you see now that just puffed. Ooh, here we go. Just got to watch that. So the next one's going to be sea glass. This is sea glass. Yeah, I'm going to kind of just go like in the middle and branch out a little bit with the sea glass. Just brings another dimension of color in. 
And like I said, you could just use the one color if that's what you like. You know, nobody says you have to do this whole multicolor leaf thing. I like it like that, but it's personal preference. I'm actually considering bringing in a little bit darker green into the mix. Let me see if I let me see if I can get. I'll be right back. Stay right there. I think I'm gonna get um, emerald. Decide. I th I, I'm thinking maybe emerald might be a little dark. Not emerald. So I'm thinking maybe Echeveria. It has a little more of a green leafy look to it. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in. I wanted them to be a little dark, a little greener. The other way they looked like they were, I don't know, had a little bit of a yellowish goldish tint. I really wanted to get the green in there. But all those other colors will be underlying under there. So I'm gonna be a little daring and I'm gonna take compass. Nope, sorry, boastful. This is one of the um, Stuck Up Pigs color shift colors. And actually, I've got to be careful. There's a lot around the edge. I don't want to lose it. Because, of course, this is a little pricey. And I'm going to bring a little bit of that in there. If you want to see, this is a color shift color. And you can see the way it changes a little bit in there. But when the light hits it, it's really beautiful. All right. I'm going to stick some of that in there. I'm not sure if it'll make a big difference in this little thing, but we'll see. These are kind of small molds. It'll add a little dimension. All of these pigments, um, like I said, they're this little piggy. You can purchase them through, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Fluid Art Co. online. Um, it's not discount codes or anything, but you know, they're great. <clears throat> they're great pigments. I really love them. And the company is wonderful. <clears throat> Again, excuse me. So let's see. I am going to start with, I brought out. 
You know, the one color I actually really did like, and I think I'll get it, was Hustle. Let me grab it. And it really added some nice dimension. I gotta find it. You know, I have to find it, but I think it might be close. Here we go. Got it. There we are. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know. I'm gonna grab my water. I don't know why my throat's so scratchy. <clears throat> Sorry about that. My water now. I don't know if you've any, any of you have uh, watched Canela Sirocco. Um, she actually did some beautiful picky flowers. And then she did them a little, little differently than I'm doing them. She actually um, put the pigment into, mixed it into the resin, and then she poured them directly into the flower, um, the flower mold, and then took them out. And then she actually put them on a painting. Now this definitely has a lot on the edges. I threw out that little piece of the round paper that comes on the top and it really makes a difference. I'm trying to get it off the edges. Because every time you close it and open it when they're on the edges, that's a good feature of the names being on the bottom. You keep them turned over, so a lot of the pigment kind of just sits around the edges of the cap. But that little round paper kind of keeps it. Let's see what happens. So now it's all over my fingers. And that is what happened there. Look at that. And I do try to be very careful. I really don't want to breathe any of this in. So I'm gonna put a little of this darker color all around the edges of the flower. Actually, let me show you what, I, what it looks like so far. I'll come up closer. <clears throat> Some of it is a little over. But you can see all the different dimension of the different greens that are in there. I think it looks really pretty when you've got the different multicolors. They kind of all shine differently, depending upon the light hitting it. So then we'll go around the edges with Hustle. Um, it's a little bit of a, almost a neon. Actually, I could have used my new one, Deja Vu. Oh, let me pull that sucker out. Let me use what's here. Oy. Knocked it all out. I'll wipe that off. But don't waste the set, any, a, a little bit of this. You know, you wanna make sure you don't waste anything. I'll do one of them with Deja Vu. See, there's a lot of pigment on this brush. I could just even close this up and put this away. This is going to poof. There we go. I think I have to see if I can find a, one of those little round things for the top. Maybe take it from another color. I don't like the way this stays around the edges and stupid me I threw that out I don't know why there we go I don't know for some reason this particular one just seems to be does that I don't know why
comigo. See you later.